Oasis of Wisdom Bible Church, the church of a different Christian generation. The greatest form of responsible living for a believer is demonstrated through commitment to evangelism. Thank you for every other things you are doing in the kingdom. But if you fail to obey the great commission to preach the gospel, you have not fulfilled the righteousness of God as expected of you. So the believer's greatest form of responsible living is demonstrated through commitment to evangelism. We will know only by boy it your God you law only lat she share a gene apostle Paul demonstrated that in abundance. How do we pay any apostle Paul who she lay lock or lock I will therefore bring out a few scripture by which you can test the spirit of apostle Paul when it comes to the issue of a man seeing himself as being indebted. To, for the salvation of others. At the place, they beat him and left him for dead. So he came back to life. He returned to the same city. Why? Because he saw saw himself as somebody indebted for their salvation. So, for that reason, he wrote at a point. He wrote, he wrote at a point. He said, what betides me if I preach not the gospel of Christ? First Corinthians chapter 9 verse 16. He said, For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. Hello? <laughs> He's, he, was, he has entitlement to so many things of affluence and of power. Are we together, church? Now, but he deliberately derobed himself of all those things. He said, all those things that I can't forget. He said, for the sake of Christ, he can't them as dung. And then he left them behind him. Then he took off the suffering of conforming with Christ. So he said, he had nothing personal to glory of, nothing personal as oh, gay. In oh, fact, he gave up gains oh, to oh, suffer oh, for oh, Christ. Oh, oh, now, until we come to that level, he said, oh, 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 we are committed to preaching Christ. Bringing others to the saving knowledge of Christ. We are we yet to be living as responsible as expected of all. So the spirit of evangelism is 
reason and the willingness to evangelize to communicate Christ to order is the highest form of responsible living expected of all believers. He went further still first Corinthians 9 16 said for necessity is laid upon me I That's what is called indebtedness. Necessity. Hello. Hi. Hold your breath for one hour. Is that possible? So she she. So necessity is on you to breathe to be alive. So say, necessity is on us to preach the gospel to prove our commitment to the kingdom. Because the Bible says in Romans 8.28 and put himself under a curse. He said, Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Hello. Only Moses can we find in the Old Testament that was near that level of commitment. You know, you know the people of Israel, they can be very troublesome. They got God so angry at a point. They got God so angry at a time. And God said, I'm wiping them out. Olorun so wi pe ni oyin o ti e oyin yo ka won kuro lori le o pa won re oyin yo pa won re lori le and then raise another generation from Moses wi pe ni oyin yo ti e wa gbe awon iran miran jide Moses said God you can't do this Moses says Moses so wi pe ni Oluwa o le se yi God you can't do this Olorun ma se se yi rather than do that dipo ki o se bayi remove my name and put their name yo oruko mi kuro ki o si foruko won sibe he was so concerned how do you pay that since you God have committed these people into my hand, I am indebted to make sure that they get to the promised so land. So how others will also make evil is your responsibility. So you are not safe just to enjoy the benefit of the kingdom. You are safe right. to be a ladder for others to get to the kingdom. So how committed are you to witnessing for Christ? How committed are you to evangelizing? How committed are you to your neighbors? Who live in the same villa with you? They bid you goodbye to church and they welcome you back to church and you never can open your mouth and say, follow me next Sunday. All that your brother, that your sister, that is still living a wayward life. You are still very comfortable. You are not moved to bring them to cry. You get into the market. You just get there to buy and sell. In the sea of people that have not come to the knowledge of Christ, and you are not concerned to even pray for their salvation. You see them as enemy, not as candidate of heaven. You get under the bridge in Lagos, and you see sea of people that are not You get under the bridge in Lagos, and you see sea of people. Without ambition of meaningful life on earth or eternity with God. What meaning does that make to your soul? Am I talking to somebody? You get on your campus and you see all manners of people 
living their life the way they want to live it. And all that it takes is for you to just invite them to church and let the pastor preach. You can't do that. Oh, Whereas yes. you even have responsibility to open your mouth and testify about Christ to them. Oh, you have responsibility to open your mouth and testify about Christ to them. Oh, you have responsibility to open your mouth and testify about Christ to them. Oh, you have responsibility to open your mouth and testify about Christ to them. Oh, you have responsibility to open your mouth and testify about Christ to them. Oh, you have responsibility to open your mouth and testify about Christ to them. So, Apostle Paul, like Moses, Apostle Paul, he was prepared to have his name removed from the book of life if that will if that will be required to make his people to come to the saving knowledge of Christ. How are you going to Moses? O se tan apostle Paul o se tan pe ni ki a mu oruko ohun kuro ni ninu iwe iye ki a si fititi awon elomiran dipo re to ba se pe ni eleyi na ni o ye fun igbale mi won. In the face of death he was fully prepared to go up to Jerusalem to testify to Christ's death and resurrection before the authority that he know will be fully well ready to kill him. Acts 21:10-14. Acts of the Apostle, chapter 21, from verse 10. A prophet came around. A prophet came around. Well known to always prophesy with accuracy. And he came and he said, Paul, if, if he goes to Jerusalem, he will be beaten. Are we together? And Paul said, I'm not only ready to be beaten, I'm even ready to die. He Paul, just to go and preach. Paul, you see, so we pay to pass the in Nani. In your tear, too, put that to pass the quay, my puny Mosetalati, no city of the stem of Acts 21. And as we tarry there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul Gedo and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews as Jerusalem bind the man that owned this Gedo and shall deliver him to the hands of the Gentiles. And when we had these things, both we and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. They were not persuading him. All that believer, spirit minded people, they are persuading him. Ah, ah, don't go. Once you one raw Paul, we pay Nikio Marcelo, I won't even go to your work. But the spirit of indebtedness will not allow him to listen to such persuasion. Suba, a miri, and you get a jig, be she, put here, get a answer. What mean ye to weep and to break my heart? May you receive grace in the name of Jesus. May you be baptized with the spirit of evangelism. Hello. Hi. For I am ready not to be bound only. But also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. And the conclusion of the matter is in verse 14. And when he will not be persuaded, we cease saying the will of the Lord. And Paul went. And Paul went. And he suffered so much there. Then Come the story of the four lepers. In 2 Kings chapter 7 from verse 3 to 9. We are well aware of the famine that took place in Samaria. Where there was no food. It got so terrible that they were buying and feeding on dung 
of pigeon of dove. O buru to be ge de bi wi pe ni o igbe yele o ni won je. Hello. Hi sir. Ko ni buru to ba ye fun wa o. It will not be hard to that level for us. After the dung of dove got finished. Nigbati igbe yele ti e wa tan. Two women agree. Awon obirin meji won gbi mo po. Eating their own children. Bi pe ni awon yo pa o ma awon and in the process of that, Nibati wants to be say some lepers left Samaria, moved into the camp of Syria, and they made free food. Ah, one day they can once see wow, kuro ni Samaria, one wo ibiti, one 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 wo ah one wo go ah one Syria, that's no wow, one bunjo of any be. They were not selfish. One kujé oni matare ni nekan. They ate. After eating, they said to themselves, This is the day of good tidings. And it's not good that we keep this story to ourselves. Hello. Just as you have been coming every Sunday, you are coming every other Wednesday. Oh, one go go joy Wednesday. All that special meeting. Ati a one joy se pataki pataki. You feed on solid diet. Oh, balanced diet. Oh, the word of God. Oh, yeah, to koju owo to mare ni le. And the word of God is producing result in your life. It is your own Lord, our own Lord. We need to move. But we still need to wash our hands. But you never open your mouth or invite somebody to come with you. Suba, oh, ya eno re. You pay niki oti e sope. We wanna tell him ekalo. Verse three of Second Kings chapter seven. And there were four lepers, leprous men at the entering of the gate, and they said one to another, "Why sit we here until we die? If we say we will enter into the city, then the farmer is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Now therefore, come and let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die." Verse five, and they rose up in the tree line to go into the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there, for the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariot and 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 a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel had hired against us the king of the Hittites and the king of Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and fled in the tree light and left their tent and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. Verse 8 And when this lever came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink and carried them silver and gold and raiment and went and eat it and came again and entered into another tent and carried them also and went and eat it. Then they said, verse 9, one to another. We do not wear. This day is a day of good tidings. And we hold our peace. If we tarry till morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now therefore come that we may go and tell the king household. So the good that they have enjoyed they discover by right thinking that it's not right for them to be selfish about it. They are indebted to the king's house. That they are indebted to the city. That they are indebted to their relatives. That they are indebted to other citizens they have left in penury. To them come and partake. Only the spirit of indebtedness can do that in the life of a believer. So this leper who has well keep the news to themselves. And they will be right to do so. If you consider their plight, 
quand nous as a form of protest for their condition we made them to be kept outside the city awon papa won ti eni awija re wi pe ni won okuku je awon gbe nu ilu tele ki won si wa pa awon gbogbo ti won ti ri ki won ko pa mo fun ara won wi pe ni won je ka awon gbe nu ilu pe awon na nbinu si awon ara eni it a law o fini are we together that lepers who say outside the city wi pe ni eni to ba je ade te ko gudo gbe arin ilu but that is enough for them to be angry against the justice of the land. Praise the name of the Lord. And they will have been right, carnally speaking, to say to hell with them. And now imagine if they had gone into Samaria as against going into, into the Syrian camp. The people that were already hitting their children, here are lepers who have been fresh meal. To ba se won ti e wo orilede Samaria ni, dipo titi to da won Syria ti won lo, a ri pe won ba ti e kuku pa won je ni, nitori pe bi tin pa won tele ninu ilu won. So people will have killed them. Awon eni o ba ti e kuku pa won je ni. To barbecue with them. Won si fi won se barbecue. Hello. They now found food and they still consider them as people that they should help. Won wa ri o nje ni Listen to me. The people you hold the gospel are not just the good people. Even those that have been back to you, you hold them the gospel. I want you to be sure to watch you. I want you to be sure to watch you. What I want you to be sure to watch you. So this leper were vulnerable. I want a debtor when you want to get into a lot of you. But the spirit of indebtedness made them to be honorable in their condor. So man, a me really need to. So what make you an honorable person before God? On to le jeki o je ni on daily basis. Oh good o je ni ti o je buku fa mo lo mire. Let us arise on our feet and cry to God. E jeki a di de do lo de se wa ki a ke ki o mo. And ask Him for mercy. Ki a bere fu a anu for holding the gospel. We pe ni a wa a si a la jo ti to si she in re re. This leper said to themselves. A wa a dete wa you want we do. Not well. So those of you who are not preaching the gospel, those of you who are not witnessing Christ, those of you who is not doing anything to influence others to come to Christ, the conclusion of the matter is that you are not doing well. It's not difficult for you to invite them to your birthday. But you know when you organize the birthday, there is not a single mention of Jesus. Everything is merriment. You don't use your occasion as opportunity to minister the gospel. You are proud of every other thing except the gospel. You can display every other thing with pride, but the gospel, you are shy. Ask God to have mercy on you. 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 To have mercy on you. In Jesus' name we pray. You see, every opportunity available to US for to be seized as a, as a puppy to preach the gospel. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. How many of you are ready to change? You want to carry the gospel with pride. Receive grace in the name of Jesus. Receive the spirit of boldness in the name of Jesus. The scripture says you will receive power. When, when you hold this close cup upon you, you and that you will be a witness for Christ. And so I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Receive a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit.